Oh, happy Friday. We have made it to the end of the week. We're excited about that and excited that we have your mailbag questions, some of which you guys submitted a few days ago. Sorry, we had not gotten to them yet, but we're going to do it today. And we've got questions probably about, I would imagine, a lot of things, including the Buccaneers and and such. So yeah, we should have like a theme Friday. We need to like a meat Friday or something, you know, kind of like Dan Friday. Patrick a Schrager, does. A Schrager yeah. Friday? Yeah, but, who's going to cook? <laughs> not me, man. <laughs> I promise but you I mean, that. It doesn't have to be meat. I mean, maybe ours is, you know, a bourbon Friday or something. I don't a know. A bourbon oh. Friday. I would like I like that. <laughs> I like that. Now, we'd have to, uh, you know, it might be a little early to crack, depending on when you're listening. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. As, as, hey, uh, hey, we're recording these. Like, so, a Friday show is actually being recorded typically on a Thursday night. So, it's Thursday late. Thursday evening. Know? So, yeah. it is. Yeah, it's definitely after 5. So, we're good there. I mean, it might be a little I'll awkward tap- at 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning when you're listening. You know, on right. your way to work that's with true. Bourbon Friday, but you know. Well, hey, if you care to join us, feel free. But I mean, you know, that's really totally on you. Just don't drink and drive. But we've got, uh, yeah, I got the Bourbon Bar here, a little Woodford Reserve. I mean, yeah, let's, uh, you know, we'll call it out. But sure, why not? Friday, <laughs> enjoy your cocktails. <laughs> Listen to a little Sports Day Tampa Bay, uh, and uh, sit back, relax, enjoy a cocktail. Yeah, have a have a have a have a hey, have a cold one for me. There's a girl in sombrero. I miss Harry Carey in the worst way. But um, anyway, yeah. So we got. I'm sure we got questions. We put some off, so we should have some left over. Let's let's get started, man. All right. Well, 100 percent guaranteed correct answers only. Or and this is key, your money back. Now, uh, see, this is a problem. I don't want to be giving any money back. Well, you got to take money first, but that's <laughs> the whole thing. Go ahead. All right. Alejandro tweeted us. He says, "Do you think the Buccaneers will draft a quarterback regardless?" if Baker Mayfield comes back or not? I wouldn't say regardless. Um, I think it'd be a good idea, but they do have they do have two others under contract, right? You still have John Wolford, who elected to stay here last year when he you know, could have gone back to the Rams, I think, um, and they put him on the active roster. Now, he could be a practice squad guy if he's their third quarterback. Just depends on what the makeup of, of their entire roster is. But most teams have been carrying two and then one on the practice squad. Uh, and they, they also still have Kyle Trask, who's in his final year of his rookie deal. You know, he, he wasn't drafted in the first round, so you're going to get four four years. And he's not really played um, except mop-up duty, you know, the last game of, what, 2022. And then he I think he threw one pass at Indianapolis after Baker Mayfield hurt his ankle. Uh, it was a good pass. It was incomplete in the end zone, but he didn't play at all last year. Um, so Kyle Trask is still, you know, unknown in terms of, you know, what his abilities will be at this level, and yet he's in his final season. But when you have those two guys, if you're able to get Baker back, and that's the key, I think, to the whole season, then I don't know that you have to uh, look at the quarterback position and go, yeah, we really need to get somebody else. However, this is considered, at least by experts, uh, much bigger experts than myself, uh, to be one of the gr- best quarterback, deepest quarterback drafts in the last 15 years or so. So there's talent, you know, beyond the first round and maybe beyond the second round. So this might be because the draft has so many quality guys that could get pushed down. You might want to consider it because you don't know what well, they know, but but I don't know, uh, you know, what, what these future draft claps look like when and if you may, you know, be inclined to have to get one. So, uh, better to get one early and and you know not have to play him right away. Uh, it'd be kind of be the best of both worlds. I mean, we've seen Green Bay do this for years, and they've had thirty years of great quarterbacks. And now it looks like Jordan Love, who sat behind Aaron Rodgers for four years, looks like he's going to benefit from that. And he was really really good last year. Um, and so it, I could think of a lot worse situations. Plus, um, you know, don't assume just because Baker Mayfield made it through a season, he was really beat up, and his style of play does not lend itself to, uh, you know, good uh, physical condition in general. Um, and he, he went through a lot of things just because of the way he throws his body around. So you're going to need a backup, need somebody behind him. And I think, you know, the ability to develop without the pressure of having to play a guy, especially a talented guy, let, let's say it's a Michael Penix Jr. or somebody like that, I think that would be huge, you know, for him to just – you know, drill it in practice, uh, see how game plans are put in, see the corrections that are made. Uh, not a lot of expectations, you know, to start off as a rookie and just kind of get your feet under you a little bit because we know he can play. We know he can throw the football. We know he's accurate. He's got a good deep ball arm strength. 
Uh, and, and there's other quarterbacks like that too, Bo Nix and different ones that could be there in the second, third round. Who knows? It was late as four. So I wouldn't go into it saying I have to draft it. I think when you say we have to get a position, you tend to reach for one. You want to get your quarterback, right? If it's a guy you like and you think fits what you want to do, then by all means. But um, this team still has a ton of needs, you know, I think on the offensive line, inside linebacker, um, you know, pretty much wide receiver, very likely, all over the field. You could use a guard that, you know, don't just get a quarterback because of the position. You get the one you like if he's there. Otherwise, address one of those other positions of need. Christopher tweeted, he says, Baker has said he wants Mike Evans back if he returned. Would priority one be to sign Mike and then tell Baker how much money is left over for you? You also have to tag and sign or sign Antoine Winfield Jr. Yeah, I mean, I you know, when I talked to Baker at the Pro Bowl, he you know, and they, they had hired uh, an offensive coordinator that he was obviously familiar with from the Rams uh, by way of Kentucky. I, I You know, he's, he called it step one. Step one of a process to get him, you know, to to come back to Tampa, and if you're going to call that step one, then step one A or two will, will will probably be to re-sign Mike Evans because, you know, there's a lot that Baker likes about this organization, and these these moves are not mutually exclu- exclusive. In other words, he recognized Mike's going to do what's best for Mike, and even even if Mike chooses to leave here and go to another team, say the Dallas Cowboys or Houston Texans or someplace. He can't then just say, well, that's it. I'm out of Tampa, even though everything else is right, right? He's got to trust that the Bucks will do what they have to do to find another talented wide receivers. It won't be Evans. Um, you still have Chris Godwin, at least for one more year. You still have the young guys, you know, in, in Palmer and others that Tompkins that have played some and are going to get better. Um, but I think you have to have faith in your front office that they're going to find you either through free agency or the draft uh, a number one target someplace. And – you know, not what you want, ideally, because they spent a lot of time together. He threw 13 touchdowns put to him, and it led the NFL. Um, you know, was able to read his body language. They're really, really good. Um, but, uh, you know, Mike's going to cost a lot of money. Baker's going to cost a lot of money. That won't change. Um, they're going to have to find a way to make that cap room available. And they do have more cap room because, you know, the, the Tom Brady contract and some others have fallen off. So it's it's way you know almost a hundred million dollars difference from a year ago, when they had you know seventy eighty million dollars of dead money up there, uh, and now they're under the cap. Um, and I I still think they can do all three. Like people ask me, well, can they sign Mike and can they sign Baker and can they sign Winfrey? Yes, yes, absolutely, you can. Um, you know whether that's pushing money down the road, you can do whatever you want to. It's an accounting principle. You have to reach into the pockets and get some signing bonus money from the Glazers, but. You know, and I, I've said this too, is like, uh, I think a lot of people assume that they will franchise Antoine Winfield Jr. And that's a, probably a, a good move from a salary standpoint because he has the lo- he would have the lowest uh, of, of, of the base salaries at safety. Uh, you get the top five average salary at your position. Um, for, for safety, it's around $15, $16 million. That's way south of 35, 36 million for a franchise quarterback. Um, but if you if you can sign Winfield, you actually lower the cap number. It'll be less than the full base salary because you're going to amortize it over the number of years of the contract. And then you could even potentially, you know, franchise Baker at 36 mil, and you could still negotiate a long term deal off of that. But you tell your team, you tell your offense, you tell everybody that hey, Baker is back, you know, and we want to keep him, and, and he's you know, don't worry about free agency. He's our guy. Um, so it could go that way too. The, I think the 19th is a big day from salary cap standpoint. They could save some money if they were to reach a deal by that with either player. Um, and out of the two, I think Mike's going to be more up in the air, to be honest, because, you know, I think some feelings were hurt a year ago. Um, I think Mike probably offered him a pretty good, a pretty good deal to stay and finish his career here. And for whatever reason, the Bucks didn't agree on the value. And then he went out there and proved his value with 1,255 yards and leading the team and the league in, in, in touchdowns with 13. So, you know, I could see and, – and, and he was just different last year, right? He, he played his butt off. Um, he played with purpose, and he was a great leader and did all those things. Didn't bitch or complain, but you could tell there's a little bit of, I don't know, 
there's a there's a big chip on his shoulder about not being given that third contract, you know, before he he played out the last one. So uh, whether he harbors any ill will or not, I don't know. I think he really wants to stay here. I think he wants to finish his career here. But in the end, the money will talk. But you can do all three, and um, I think of those three, uh, obviously Winfield's not going to go anywhere if you have to franchise him. But I mean, the quarterback is everything in this league, right? You finally found a guy. And he found you, and he's been, you know, roaming through the desert as well in the NFL with four teams in 16, 18 months. And now he comes here, he has a career year, he has great talent around him, he's built a culture, he's part of a culture that's winning now, you know, four playoff appearances in a row, the most in the NFC, three division championships, like, you know, you got everything right here for you. Why would you want to try to start over again, right, with a fifth team? Um, I don't see that happening, and I think the Bucks. We'll, we'll find a way to get to his value of, you know, 35, 36 mil, whatever that is. And uh, I look for him to be back. But Evans, uh, I just think Evans is probably, since he has the choice, I think, you know, Winfield wants to be here, I believe, personally. Um, but he, and, and, and his is easier in the standpoint, not only is it less money, but, but Winfield can say, I'm one of the top two safeties in football, pay me. And you can't argue with him because he was all pro. And so it's a little hard to, you know, to have a difference of opinion there. Um, there could be some difference of opinion with Mike in terms of, you know, he's 31 and, and you know, how does he rank up against guys that came out in the same draft class or younger guys? Or, you know, so there's some ambiguity there, but I don't think with Winfield there is. Scotty asked, what is your assessment of Logan Hall? I think he's played a lot of snaps this year, but never heard his name. Is he underachieving for a first-round pick? Um, the easy answer is yes. You know, uh, I don't necessarily think he's, he was a great pick. Now I have said this too about other players who have since proved me wrong. Um, Rashad White being one of those guys. I think that if you're special, it shows up early. Kalijah Kansi showed up early. Yaya Diaby showed up early, right? Devin White well, as a rookie showed up early. So to me, if if you're that guy, you're gonna at least flash and say, "Whoa!" Right now, we can go all the way back to Warren Sapp, who did nothing as a rookie. Like there are circumstances that you know can certainly affect that. You know, the wrong defense, what they're asking you to do, who's ahead of you. Um, but in this case, I don't think Logan Hall has made enough plays that I remember uh, or been a difference maker when he comes in. He's not a starter per se, uh, or hasn't been every single year that he's played. Um, I think he got better last year. I saw him in the backfield a few times, some tackles for losses, things like that. Um, but if my if I take this guy where, where they took him, man, you, you've got to at least be in the conversation, right, at some point for a Pro Bowl, um, you know, best in your division. I mean, something. you got to post numbers, and he just hasn't. And, you know, maybe, maybe some of that – you know, has to do with how he's felt and injuries and different things that have kind of bugged him. But um, they got to get more out of him because they do have a lot of resources poured into Logan Hall. And I don't think it's paid off. And I'm not sure why, you know, he, he works at it. Uh, he seems to be an athletic enough guy, you know, a little more linear, like not as, not as rocked up to play inside perhaps. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe he's you know, getting pushed around a little bit, um, not as physical, uses maybe more of his speed or quickness than than strength. But for whatever reason, I just don't see him making enough plays. So, you know, to me, he's not been a very good first-round pick. Craig asks, of the next five Super Bowls, only one location is an open-air stadium in Santa Clara. With it being such a global event now, will Tampa need a dome stadium for a future Super Bowl? Vegas is now set to be a permanent rotation for the game based on all reviews. I don't think they'll need a dome stadium. I mean, Rob Higgins was out at the Super Bowl in Las Vegas, and he's working hard to try to bring you know one back here. I, I think the next one that's even remotely available that hasn't been promised is probably like 2028 uh, or so, uh, right around there. And so it's going to be a while regardless, but obviously having a dome stadium makes it more comfortable for fans. Although in February is usually not the hottest month of the year here. You know, you worry about some cold fronts and some rains and things like that. Uh, but they played them here at that time in the past. So 
I, you know, the one thing that I would say is these new stadiums are getting these games. Um, once you run out of that, it's in New Orleans next year. Uh, I always believe, as Tom Jones has said, if you can't grow a palm tree in that city, you shouldn't have the Super Bowl. Uh, and they've had some, you know, some cold weather uh, stuff like that. But no, would it require a dome stadium? No, because some of the greatest Super Bowls ever played were played here in Tampa on or about that time, and there was no dome stadium. The weather's pretty pretty temperate then. Uh, it can be cold even at times. Um, so they would take all that into consideration. Now, do I think they're going to get a new stadium down the road? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I just I'm waiting for that release right from the Bucks that says, "Yeah, we would like to uh, ask the Hillsborough County uh, to consider helping us finance a new building." Uh, and and if they did one, I think it would be one of two things: either it would be sort of a uh, of a dome uh, situation, maybe like Minnesota, where there's a lot of glass. You don't feel like you're locked inside; you get to see outside. Um, it's actually pretty cool or warm in Minnesota as the case may be, but not, you know, at minimum, I think there would be sort of more of an awning approach where a lot of the seats in the upper, upper decks anyway, would have, you know, some kind of cover, um, kind of too expensive to do in an existing stadium. But if you're going to do it with a new ballpark, I think there'll be, you know, some room for shade, but, uh, yeah, I mean, these stadiums, man, it's a stadium game. And, you know, we see what the Rays went through. Don't think that the that the Bucks aren't paying close attention, and Hillsborough in particular, because Hillsborough didn't get the Rays, and the Bucks is their thing. So wouldn't surprise me. And and they, and they own the land. You know, like when they built Raymond James, um, that was the side of the old, old, you know, Al Lopez field. And then they knocked down what was then the big sombrero, uh, Tampa Stadium. Now they would have to knock down Raymond James and build a new stadium, you know, where Al Lopez used to be, which is like kind of closer down to uh, to Spruce and that. So uh, we'll see. Or, or no, probably, I'm sorry, it's north. At, at this point, it's probably north of, of uh, where Raymond James is now. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, stadiums now are lasting, what, 20, 25 years? And then it seems like they're moving on, which seems like an incredibly short amount of time. But that, that seems to be like the lifespan of them. Harlan asked, do you think the NFL and NFL PA will ever institute a salary cap for quarterbacks? Salaries are getting outrageous and affecting the remainder of the 43 man roster. Well, if the union did that, they're foolish. Um, you know, I, I'm one that believes that they should get as much money as they can. And it's up to the union to decide whether their rank and file guys that aren't quarterbacks feel like they're getting ripped off. But, um, listen, uh, it's the most important position maybe in sport, you know, next to hockey goaltender. I don't know what would be harder, you know, not just the physicality of it, but, uh, you know, the mental part of it uh, is tough too. And don't forget too, uh, you don't get to get that salary until you're, you know, five years. I mean, most, most franchise court, not most, but a lot of franchise quarterbacks are drafted in the first round. And if they are, you have a five-year deal. You have four years plus a fifth-year club option. So that big money doesn't doesn't necessarily hit till year six. Well, if you got a guy that's going really, really well in year six and he has a chance to make $50, 60000000 million, then you are blessed, my friend, and you are not going to have any trouble paying him. But it's still, I think, important you know, to try to win while your quarterback's on a rookie deal because you can get more players. However... Patrick Mahomes hasn't been on a rookie deal for some time, and it's not bothering him or his Kansas City Chiefs. Now it is, in the sense that you lose a Tyree Kill and and others. You gotta go. You gotta find a way to win a different way. And he's probably not a great example because of how great he is. Um, but that's it's just that's the deal. It's an allocation system, and I don't think going into it you say, "Hey, we need a special salary cap for quarterbacks." Well, what about wide receivers? What about you know? That's the sort of thing the owners would love. Uh, but I think the union has fought too hard to just take all the revenue that they make, the designated gross revenue, and say, okay, we get 48%, you know, and here's your salary cap. And it goes up and up every year just because the league prints money every year. Uh, and I don't see that slowing down necessarily. But, no, I think if you draft a quarterback and you're in, he's in your control for five years, then we can talk about how much he deserves after that. 
All right, we got some other uh, questions coming up uh, that are not necessarily football related, some baseball and other things in just a second. First, I want to remind you guys that, you know, for the past 14 years, what's been going on around here? Well, the skilled pros of Man Electric Solar, they've been installing solar energy systems all over the state of Florida, probably next door to you. They provide the most reliable solar equipment, the best installation methods and service, while helping homeowners cut energy costs with environmentally friendly investment may electric solar uses their own skilled employees man never subcontractors they've always offered the safest and most reliable equipment now may electric solar is offering a 30-year no cost equipment replacement and labor warranty that means for 30 years may electric solar backed by solar insurer means that your roof electrical and equipment replacement is all covered solar insurer even survives may electric solar and is owned by the homeowner with no deductibles or d- additional fees. Now, this policy will transfer to new homeowners with no fee. It's not a blanket insurance policy. In fact, only the best contractors are allowed to be part of it. And this program, May Electric Solar's reputation and history of workmanship, has earned them this membership. To learn more about May Electric Solar's installation and their 30 year warranty, call 727 819 2862 or visit mayelectricsolar.com. All right, let's continue with our mailbag questions. All right, Garf had emailed you. Says, with Rays baseball around the corner, the underlying fact that Major League Baseball is totally unbalanced that we know it's only a matter of time before stars like Randy Rosarina and Yandy Diaz leave for wealthier teams. It's hard to take sometimes, but with the upcoming new stadium, there is some hope. My question, is it really a done deal? I've heard nothing as far as progress is concerned. Frankly, like many fans, I don't think I'll believe it until a shovel hits the dirt. Percentage-wise, what do you think the, you believe the chances are going forward? When will it become a done deal instead of glorious fantasy? Thank you. I know I listen every day. Very much appreciate you and Steve for a must-listen podcast. Okay, of everything he just said there, that last line is the only one that you really need to think about um, to me. That's the one that's important. But nonetheless, we'll address the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to them. You want answers. <laughs> yeah. Listen, um, I'm of the, uh, you know, when you have a choice between believing the video and the audio, always choose the video because talk is cheap, man. And you know, the shovel has to go in the ground before I will believe it too, because we've seen a a ton of these, you know, various iterations of, Oh, it's going to be here. Oh, it's going to be there. Now this one's a little different in that, you know, they've discussed terms of development and, how to finance it, and now we you kind of have an idea what the Rays are willing to put into it. So it's a little more, a lot more tangible. And there's and there's an actual piece of property there uh, that can it can be developed on. It just so happens to be next to the trap. So I think this one feels different, looks different. But until the and and until it's all signed, dotted, and and you know the, the secured, I don't necessarily think it is a done deal. You know. Like, like you got to start putting some stakes in the ground to me, you know, and I, I don't see it until it starts to rise. I'm not going to like the Phoenix out of the dead. I'm not going to believe it. Um, but they tell us that it's going to happen. So I guess we have to keep the faith. We're not in those discussions. Well, and you don't hear a lot of the bickering. You don't hear a lot of finger pointing. Yeah, I would think there'd be some people like complaining, like this could fall apart. You know, there'd be some warning shots over the bow. I think, mm -hmm. or you know, so and so's negotiating in bad faith, and you know those kind of things. You're not hearing any of that. I tend to think that's a positive sign. I would agree. Not guaranteed, but it's you know you're not. It's not doesn't seem like there's any acrimony. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, I, you know, I he asked for a percentage wise. I I think it's going to get done. Right. Um, the, the shovel's got to be in the dirt fairly quickly if you're going to play there in the 28. Too, but, because the, the but, Rays, they, they have to get out of there. So if it wasn't going well, I think mm-hmm. they would start making noises. But but the other part is is the shovel's got to go in the ground pretty quick if you're going to play in 2028. But because you're building on the same site with the same, you could push it back a year if you had to. Like, you know, if if – if you you're dotting I's and crossing T's and can't get the shovel in, in the dirt enough time this year to have it ready for 28, there's no reason you couldn't play at the trop till 28 and then the new stadium 29. I mean, it's not yeah, ideal. I guess, I guess that's but, different than having a signed sealed agreement. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but I'm just saying if the shovel can't if they if they can't get every last detail 
ironed out so the shovel goes in the ground by whenever the deadline is. It's probably sometime this year. Yeah. It takes usually about three years to build a stadium. Right. Typically. So if your shovel's not in the dirt by this summer, it's going to be tough to be ready for 2028. I would think. Yeah, I just settle for a signed agreement, man. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> everybody's then, yeah knows how this is, is going to be financed, where it's going to go, what it's going to look like, all that stuff. Lay it out, man. Cards on the table, time. But you're right; they haven't they haven't announced any kind of acrimony or split or you know warning shots. So I think as long as the waters are calm, it's probably a good thing. John tweeted us. He says the Rays don't seem to have done much of anything in the hot stove league. Is this the year they finally take a step back? Well, you, you might think that, but, uh, you know, last year people were bemoaning the fact that they didn't get a left-handed bat and they didn't do this and they didn't do that, and all they did was go out and win 99 games, including 13 to start the season. So I think, uh, what would they say this season is reminiscent? Was it 2018 or 19? Uh, one of those where they, they decided to go with the youngsters to bring guys up mm -hmm. in, from the organization. They have some talent. Uh, some of it's major league ready, and to give those guys an opportunity. Um, and you could say, well, that's what small market teams do, and it's true to some extent. But um, I, I, I don't know about taking a step back. Look, I've counted the Rays out many times before, and there's no reason to do so anymore, okay? Because, you know, even last year, you looked at the lineup and you go, no, uh, you know, okay, Randy and Wander, that's that's a great place to start. Um, you know, who's going to hit home runs and you know, it you know, who you got enough power bats in the outfield and what is Josh Lowe going to do? What is Brandon Lau going to do? Like there was so many question marks um that they answered and like I said, they won 99 games. I think you know, I think the p starting pitching is a question. Um but if you got Randy, even if Warner didn't come back, they've tried to address that through free agency. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm always going to buy them from now on until they prove me out. Until they just tank it, mm -hmm. and they're like the worst team in the American League East, and they, you know can't win a game. And you know, I think some on. of the harder part is is as Baltimore is a good young team that showed they're ready. Oh sure, last year. yeah, won the division. I think Boston's going to be better. I think Toronto will be where they were, if not better. The Yankees added, like, Juan Soto. Like, the AL East doesn't get easier. Uh, Baltimore is going to be the team to beat again, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But and the AL East doesn't get easier, there. and so that no, makes it harder. No. Yeah. You know, to, it's, for it's, sure. But the Rays also have a few things, too, where, and, and Brian Anderson was, was saying this on the radio the other day, you know, if the pitching can stay fairly healthy at the beginning of the year. Right. You know, and, and – you know who those starters are. We'll see. I mean, you know, yeah. we know it's going to be Eflin. We know it's going to be Savali. We know it's going to be Zach Littell. Yeah, those three are pretty much locked in at the rotation. Whether it's Taj Bradley or Ryan Pepio or somebody else, you know, I think those two get the first shot at it. Mm -hmm. But if if the pitching can stay healthy most of the first half of the year, if you start getting guys like Jeffrey Springs and Drew Rasmussen back in the middle of the season. Like that's almost a trade deadline acquisition. If they if they if they come back healthy and and ready if to they're go, the, if they're themselves, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know where they'll even have some reinforcements coming late in the season. You hope. And and so, and, and then you know they cleared out some space for young guys. You know we have another question, and and this kind of dovetails into it. But Joshua had mm -hmm. tweeted asking, "Do you think Josh Lowe becomes an everyday player this season?" The answer is, as every day as the Rays have everyday players, because nobody plays every day. Uh, you know, their outfield is basically going to be a Rosarina, Siri, and Josh Lowe. And probably Johnny DeLuca fills in. He becomes the Manuel Margot that becomes the backup at each of those three. Yeah. You know, so, you know, he's probably playing three days a week. Everybody's getting at least one day off. Maybe he plays four and somebody gets two. You know, but it, it's. You know, they got rid of Luke Rayleigh to clear space for Johnny DeLuca and for Josh Lowe to play more. And, yeah, you know, that's it's kind of some of the moves they've made were I mean, al if allowing can, young if guys can, time to play. If he can swing it against left-handers a little bit better, mm -hmm. um, 
He did a lot of things, including run the bases. Yes. The guy stole some bases. So, yeah, I want him in the lineup as much. I, I don't know that he's a plus outfielder or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you you played Luke Raley out there some last year. So, Well, I mean, I think Luke. he's a good outfielder. And when you put him next to Jose Siri, that makes you a better outfielder. That makes you better, yeah. Um, but it, Much yeah, like I, when you played next to Kevin Kiermaier, you were a better outfielder because he covered guess up a lot is, of things. My guess is they're counting on him being in the lineup almost every day. I, I would just expect that. I think he's four they, to five out of every six games. I mean, that's full, like you said, that's as full time as you get with the race. Yeah. You know, outside of Rosarina is about as full time as you get on that team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want him in the lineup I mean, every day, yeah. except he doesn't few, take many days, days off, off here but, or there. But yeah. So, I mean, the guy had a breakthrough season, mm -hmm. you know, and, it, and, and I still think there's meat on the bone. I still think he can get more consistent and be a better. And probably hit for more power too. So, yeah, and all these guys look—they don't miss on many, and the ones that you think they missed on, they come back like low, mm -hmm. and they they prove their worth. So, well, and he even talked about different. look going back down to Durham was the best thing that could have happened to him. Sure, it was. Took the pressure off of him. It took the pressure, but he got to go down and work on things. Right. You know, can't do that at the major league level. We've seen that with Willie Adamas when he first came up. Oh yeah, you know, and then he hit a, a really bad rut, and so he went mm -hmm. back down for I don't know, it was a month, month and a half, whatever it was, but took the pressure off, got to work on some things, fix some things, and came back mm -hmm. up, and then never left until they, they right. traded him, of course. Right. You know, that's the thing with young players is you know just because their debut didn't go as well as you hoped or they hit a wall after a few games doesn't mean they're done or washed up. No, it's. A, I mean, that this sport is just mm -hmm. crazy long, crazy marathon, and how consistent you have to try to become. Mm -hmm. All right, Tommy tweeted. He says, since Dave Wills is going into the Rays Hall of Fame this season, what's your favorite all-time from him? Wow. Whew. There's a lot of great calls that he's had. It's got to be the going to the. It's got to be two thousand and eight. The, yeah. the the ground ball to Aki yep. Hiramura, um when he steps on second and he says, uh, "This, I don't know. I, I'm not going to quote him directly, but this is impossible season or improbable, improbable season has yep. another chapter." Mm -hmm. I think that was probably it for me. It was such an exciting moment, you know, and that game was so tight and bringing David Price in on the mound like they did, and you know the ball's kind of slashed up the middle. It kind of takes this weird. I don't know if you ever watched the replay of the hop that that thing takes. That could have easily gone into center field. <laughs> and uh, Aki just gloves it and steps on second and uh, puts wisely puts the ball in his pocket, which I thought was a deft move. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, no, I thought Dave – Dave had so many of them. Um, did he – now, I, I can't remember if it was him or Andy was on the call for uh, Evan Longoria's home run. I can't recall. It just doesn't, it doesn't pop in my head. But um, – but yeah, I mean that that's the moment of the franchise, right? When they when mm -hmm. they beat the Red Sox and and to go to the World Series for the first time in 08 after being a team that, you know, lost 100 every year and it was fresh and new and you had these young stars and the rookie and Evan Longoria and uh BJ Upton and all those guys. So I can I will never forget where I was. I was I was in a locker room after a Bucks game they had beaten Seattle nobody would talk to us because they were in the ninth inning of the Rays game it was on TV and <laughs> we're just standing around waiting to see what they did um and it was weird too because at the stadium uh people had their radios and uh occasionally they'd show some video too but like all of a sudden you just hear like this cheering for no reason when it comes mm -hmm. to what was happening on the field and you realize you go oh wow everyone's locked into this Rays game something must have just happened so that was cool. Um, but yeah, Dave, Dave Wills talking about how this, this season has another chapter. That, that's probably the, the best call to me. T-Dog uh, tweeted, says, happy spring training. Help. Please clear up the Rays 2024 television situation, especially for us cord cutters. How will we know which app to open each day to watch that night's game? MLB, Bally's, Amazon Prime, Fox Sports, ESPN, etc. Thanks from a daily listener. The short answer currently is the same as you did last year. Bally's okay. will carry most of the games. Now, they're okay. in bankruptcy, and Amazon's in the process of investing or slash buying them, but it's not done yet. And they're in, Bally's parent company, Sinclair, is in bankruptcy court. So a lot of this will get decided by that. But as the season is getting ready to start, most of the games will be on Bally's, just like you had. 
Of course, ESPN will never take the Rays, so don't worry about watching them. But Fox Sports will take some Rays games uh, for their Saturday packages on FS1 and or Fox Sports. Um, we know they're not on Sunday Night Baseball. I said MLB Network may get a game or two. Apple still has their package for Friday night games, so the Rays were on there occasionally. Uh, and I believe Peacock still has a Sunday morning package, hmm. which had games like at noon on Sundays, which the Rays were on two or three times last year, I think. So Yeah, that that's kind of the toughest thing. I mean, if, if they're going to be on Bally you know, predominantly, mm-hmm. and, and, and I get that in Spectrum, I'm okay. They have the occasional you know Thursday night game, and, and I have that app. When they start – you know, splitting these things up to the point where a I don't know where they are, and b I need like four different apps to watch them. That's when it's going to be tough to me. Well, that's where all the sports. Are. I mean, how, how many different apps do you need for college football? How many apps do you need for college basketball? Um, you know, I, I mean NFL. Okay, so I got, I've got four different networks now. Granted, most of them are over the air, and you can I need get, Amazon. But, but now you got Amazon on Thursday nights, and now you got playoff games going to Peacock exclusive, and yes, yeah, and you're going to have yeah. stuff on Paramount Plus exclusive eventually, and like all these, all these sports are doing this. That's why, if you saw the news, and I don't know 100 percent of the details of it, but ESPN and Fox and some of the networks are going to start their its own streaming app, basically for sports fans, where all your sports are going to be there. Well, that's great. And the NFL's ticked. They are. Yeah, well, they are ticked off, and they are. Uh, the reports are they're combing through their contracts with Fox and ESPN <laughs> and that because this is yeah. going to cost them money. In the long run, sure it will. But the, the sports the sports entities are realizing this ain't going to work forever. Like, right? You know, I mean, how many people? I'm one of them. All right, there's something I want to watch on Peacock this month. I'll subscribe one month and turn it off. Sure, that's what that's what most people did for the NFL playoff game. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you 23 million people watched it on Peacock, and that's great and tremendous. How many of those people canceled the next month? Right, they paid their six bucks and left. Mm-hmm. I was one. Um, and I may pick up Peacock for a, a game later this year. I mean, you know, I'll do that a month at a time on stuff because you, you start adding up all your streaming bills and it's incredible. Oh, it's it's huge. Yeah. And I got them all because I, you know, when I go to the stadium, sometimes we can see the, the picture, but mm-hmm. I want to be able to hear the sound. So I have apps to all those Paramount mm-hmm. and, and different ones. But so, yeah, I'm one. I just turn it on for a month at a time. I subscribe. Mm-hmm. Pay the month. What? You know, six, seven, ten bucks. Yes, whatever it is. I remember to cancel. No, I, I canceled immediately. Yeah. Like as soon as I sign up, I already go ahead and hit the cancel and it says, you know, you're still good until, you know, a month from now, whatever the date is. Yeah. You know, that way I don't forget. Yeah. No, it's smart. Um I'm gonna have to add up all the streaming services I have. It's not pretty. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, the pay per view, which is essentially what we're talking about, it's tough. I get why people have anxiety about it and yeah, I want to make sure that my carrier has the raise or my app mm-hmm. or whatever, because you got to follow baseball. You got to do it every day for you know for six yeah. months. I mean, so that's, the real that's game the changer. Way. I mean, the honest truth is when you say cord cutters, YouTube TV, which is the biggest, as far as multi, you know, all, you get all kinds of different channels, news and sports and entertainment, and it's yeah. a cable. It's just not coming through the wall. That's right. It's coming through the internet instead of yeah. a, a cable. It's they're it's not cutting the you've cut the cord because there's no cord to it. Yeah, like coming from the street, and you know, it's cable. great for college football. But it's, but it's, it's a cable company. That's what they are. Yeah, the real game changer comes in twenty twenty five, when ESPN does a standalone, mm. where you can buy ESPN, and they say they're targeting, I think, fall of twenty five, when you can, and I don't know what the price will be yet. They haven't announced anything, but right, you could right. buy all of ESPN stuff, not have to have YouTube TV or FUBU or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, or Spectrum. To get ESPN. And and then if this new streaming venture, if it really puts together Fox and ESPN in this, and you can pay one price for just sports and not pay for, if, if you're a guy who just wants sports or a person, you don't want CNN, you don't want AMC, you don't want all that stuff, you just want sports. Mm-hmm. This sounds like it's going to be a good, you know, a good thing for sports fans. Now, we haven't seen the price, we haven't seen details, et cetera. It's just an announcement that's coming. Not there yet, but the honest truth is it, it gets hard to watch sports if you want to watch a team every day. Sure. Because, you know, like, okay, the Rays have 162 games, maybe 140 some are on Bally's, but then right. there's another 15 that are going to be somewhere else. 
I'm still searching for them. I'm still flipping around or trying to figure out, okay, where are they on today? You know, like what, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, the Lightning have the, the NHL deals. There's 82 games in the NHL season. The national networks can take 13 games from every team. They don't have to take 13, but between TNT, ESPN, and ESPN Plus, up to 13 games can be taken national. So Bally's at minimum and for the for the Lightning get 69 games a year. They might get 70 or 71, just depends on what ESPN and Turner's plans are that year. But there's still 10 to 13 games a year you got to go find. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's not horrible, but I I still was thrown an occasion for the, you know, every off Amazon mm-hmm. game. I mean, it's it's what? Th- it's 15% of your games? Yeah. That's a decent amount. Yeah, it is when you watch every night or you try yeah. to have it on yeah, every 15, night. Yeah, 15 to 20% in that range. I mean, mm-hmm. so, and, and, you know, you know, summer ESPN, summer TNT, which if you've got a YouTube TV or Spectrum, you'll probably have, but there's mm-hmm. a handful that are ESPN Plus, which means you got to have right. a subscription. I, I don't, yeah, that's a subscription. Yeah, much like that. the Peacock for the NFL playoff game and right. Amazon Prime for the Thursday night football and. It's hard if you want to. It's expensive to watch every sport. Man, they're just trying to take money, man. It's not right. I want three TV channels all free, and you have no remote. You have to have your kid turn the channel. That's that's the way it used to be. All right, thanks for your mailbag questions. We've got a pretty busy weekend in sports, I would say. The Lightning are going to host those stinking Panthers. That game, by the way, is 5 p.m. on Saturday. And then on Sunday, biggest basketball game, I don't know, maybe since 02, 01, USF is going to host Florida Atlantic. They, USF has won 10 in a row. Florida Atlantic ranked in the top 25. It is a sold-out Yingling Center, so that's some, going to be something to watch. And then one of my favorite events, the Daytona 500 is on Sunday. I can't believe it's already here. It's on Sunday uh, from t- Daytona, Florida. So car run good. Hate it for the crew. All that stuff coming up. Uh, busy weekend, of course. Or you know it, we'll, we'll be at the Combine. We'll be, you know, uh, all over the place talking NFL, yeah. free agency starting up. So I believe the window to start uh, franchise and transition tagging players is next week. I think you're right. Wouldn't that be something if, I mean, say, a tag is used on someone? Well, I think it will be. It's just a matter of which one. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Yeah, it'll, it'll be a guy, it'll be a field. It's going to be somebody with the last name of Field. Winfield, Mayfield, right? Yeah. So You couldn't you wouldn't do that to Evans, would you? Uh boy, I that seems like more of a contract than they would want to pay. But for one year, um, you'd have to be renting them for one season. I wouldn't rule out anything. I think it's less likely for if mm-hmm. I had to handicap it, I'd say it'd be Winfield, Mayfield, and then Evans. But yep, yeah, you gotta you, if you want those guys back, and you, the only way to ensure that they're really yours, uh, essentially, is is to is to tag them. But it's it's a it's a big ticket item, not as big for the safeties necessarily. Uh, certainly, those other guys. So that's going to be a date to watch early next week for sure. All right. Well, thanks for listening. We hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe. We'll talk to you on Monday for Steve Burstick. I'm Rick Stroud of the Tampa Bay Times. Enjoy your sports.